I like magic and I like fairies and trolls and gnomes and mm -hmm. especially gnomes. Who are, I like to call them Tomtons or mm -hmm. Missy. Yeah. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully. Today we're up in Burlington at the Sheridan at the Vermont Handcrafters Annual Show and I'm here with artist Susie Ryan um, in the felted gnome booth and we're here to talk about her felt creations. Thanks for being here with me. Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, so I often interview friends, but I actually don't know you very well. So this is a great opportunity for me to learn about what you do too. So how long have you been doing um, felting? Since 2011. Oh, wow. Yeah. So fairly recently. Well. Ish. <laughs> Ish. Yeah, I guess so. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have, I have friends who do their art and they've been doing it for decades and yeah. decades. So yeah, that's great. So how did you get into it? Um, my husband had a business mm -hmm. and uh, he sold the business and we mm -hmm. had a two year non-compete clause. Mm -hmm. And he uh, has <clears throat> a huge family mm. and they all ex expect something for Christmas. Right. <laughs> so I had to come up with things to make uh -huh. uh, for Christmas gifts and I was knitting Mm -hmm. And I was um, shrinking down sweaters and cutting them apart and mm -hmm. making things. And my daughter and I ended up at a yarn store and we saw mm -hmm. a felting kit. And mm -hmm. she was like, Mom, can I try this? Right. So we got it home, the needle yeah. felting kit. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I could do so much with this. Yeah. And because I had helped start a farmer's market in Essex, mm -hmm. I knew a lot of farmers. Mm -hmm. I have friends who are shepherds. Mm -hmm. And I made it my mission to basically buy all my wool locally and have it processed locally. And mm -hmm. then I dye it myself, too. Oh, that's yeah. great. So I know all the farmers that yeah. are the shepherds that... And it's a really from scratch product oh, that way too. The whole That's thing, great. yeah. I wash that raw wool and uh -huh. I get it over to a mill if I have mm -hmm. a huge amount. But if mm -hmm. it's small, I actually do all the mm -hmm. washing and dyeing yeah. and, and preparing. And you can be really specific about exactly what you want. We'll show yes. um, some of her pieces have a very specific texture on them, so we'll show some pictures of those a little later on. But that gives you that sense of control. Yes. Of getting exactly the effect you want for like a may I yes, like go a, ahead. a beard or something like this so you you can really see the detail there um, and that beard actually is is wool from um, Clover Works oh great uh, farm yep. and Katie uh, saved a, a, a lamb's fleece for me mm -hmm. for the curls mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's great so you can put out the columns that I need Long and shiny, or I need short yes. and curly, or yeah. I need this texture, yeah. that texture, and, yeah. and get that going. That's great. And fiber um, people are the most wonderful, warm, mm -hmm. easygoing people. Yeah. To you know, I mean, I just feel so welcomed by that community. Right. I really enjoy them, mm -hmm. and it's exciting to see each other when we get together. Right. Well, as a shepherd, it's really nice to have someone who truly appreciates, you know, your specific breed and exactly what you're doing and the genetics you've been working on to get that fiber that way and all those details, too. So it's great to have customers like you, you know, on the other side of it, really appreciating the unique qualities of each breed yeah. and all of that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's really nice. Um, so what inspires you? You do, um, you know, you do animals, you do figurines, you do crazy hats. I see you've got some masks um, in your booth today. Mm -hmm. but what kind of things uh, kind of inspire you with your designs or your new creations? Well, my daughter is a pixie. She mm -hmm. really loved fairy tales when mm -hmm. she was really little, and um, she's got a huge imagination. Mm -hmm. So um, that kind of inspired me. I also mm -hmm. like magic. Mm -hmm. I like magic and I like fairies and trolls and gnomes and mm -hmm. especially gnomes. Who are, I like to call them Tomtons or mm -hmm. Nissy. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, so that's what inspires me. So the, the fantastical yes. kind of yep. whimsical and, and that yep, and yeah. that whole that whole fantasy scape is, yes. is where you get your ideas. That's yeah. great. Um, and tell us a little bit more about other materials you use. I see ribbon and feathers. Um, and you incorporate well, different things, brocade. Yep, um, those are actually pretty minor, I feel. Mm -hmm. um, I do Nuno felting, so some mm -hmm. of the uh, hats actually have different, um, if you grab that hat over there, yep. um, 
somebody sent me a shawl, a wool shawl that had been um, just kind of torn apart, and I use that shawl as a base for this hat and laid the wool over it so that it created a texture. Mm -hmm. um, so I like to experiment with textures. Mm -hmm. uh, got the little guys yeah, coming off there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. And, uh, and Nuno felting, that's where you have a, a base layer of fabric and you, you felt the wool into it, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, vice versa. Lovely. Or vice versa. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's great. Actually, um, one of my favorite pieces that I did this year, if I can go grab it. It's actually this, um, I knew no felted lace and oh, wool wow. together. Yep. And uh, I, I think that that is just beautiful. You know, yeah. it's just absolutely amazing when so, you create so you a see brand the, new cloth. The kind of start there, the lace at the bottom and then how it blends into the wool there on the edge. Yeah. It's really incredible. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So experimentation also plays a big role in your work. Yes. Trying new things. Yes. And, and uh, do you um, get a lot of this uh, stuff at thrift stores and salvage and um, secondhand places? Yeah, I actually yeah. like to, yeah, recycle mm -hmm. pieces. Yeah. So um, a lot of these I will find at um, secondhand stores mm -hmm. and yard sales mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And yeah. Uh, people send me stuff too. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I actually, I happen to love like Renaissance fests and that type mm -hmm. of thing. And my friend Jill, who owns Hesthole um, Icelandic Sheep, uh, she also happens to love the whole medieval thing. Mm -hmm. And she uh, got me some of the ribbon when mm -hmm. she went to a fair down in Boston. So oh, nice. that's where these some of these ribbons come from. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Very nice. I imagine, too, it's kind of like, you know, you take up knitting and somebody says, oh, my Aunt Tilly passed away and she had a bunch of knitting stuff. Here you go. Yes. And you're kind of, uh, what's all this? But it can be a great treasure trove, too. Yes. A nice source. Yeah. And also a source for inspiration, too. Going, yeah. Ooh, what can I make with this? Yeah. 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 That's really cool. Yeah. Um, so we're at this big uh, craft fair. How long have you been doing craft Vermont? Oh, my goodness. Oh, pretty big show. I know it's yeah, been going for say, like 60 plus years. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I've been, it's been over five, five or six years, mm -hmm. yeah, that I joined Vermont Handcrafters, which is yeah. a, you know, it's a great organization. Mm -hmm. It's one of the oldest organizations of artisans that mm -hmm. are juried mm -hmm. uh, in the state, and it's just a wonderful group of people, and yeah. it's exciting when you come to the show and you mm -hmm. get to see people that you only see once a year, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and see what they've been doing new. And I also like, you know, being able to see my customers who mm -hmm. I actually interact with online a lot. Right. So that's yeah. really terrific. It's funny, I've been talking with, that seems to be a theme for a lot of crafters and even farmers that work by themselves. It's nice to get out to a show and actually, you know, see people appreciate your work or yeah. get to watch them try it on or, or yeah. things like that. It's a nice gratification to, to see that in person. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so you mentioned um, you know things that people are working on every year and their new stuff. So what do you have new plans for 2018? Any big plans? Um, new designs? Well, I like I like the hats. Yeah. So I'm always you know mm -hmm. making new hats and mm -hmm. trying new hats. Um, I think I'm uh, experimenting more with bigger animals. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the things that people don't realize about needle felting, they think they're stuffed animals, mm -hmm. and they're not. You actually take wool that is not spun, and you poke it with a needle mm -hmm. for hours mm -hmm. <laughs> and hours to create mm -hmm. a little sculpture. Right. And um, so, so that wool's layered and layered on top of itself. It's right. built up from a base. Right. Or yeah. you have a wire armature that mm -hmm. you build upon. But mm -hmm. um, you know, like for example, if you grab the the donkey or the you know oh, those donkeys, great. Yeah. yeah. I mean that that takes uh, you know like twenty hours right. to make a donkey. Right. Yeah. And. Um, you can tell that you know the craftsmanship and your sense of proportion this isn't you know the most anatomically <laughs> um correct but it, it's it's a donkey there's mm -hmm. no question it's not a horse it's not anything else it's definitely a donkey yeah so your sense of proportion in this kind of fantasy uh stylized way that you do them it's really great yeah i think I most that. needle felters develop their own little style main. yeah yep so yeah yeah those uh, are great yeah. Awesome. yeah, and I think fi fiber art is, is not, um, 
looked at usually as an art mm -hmm. and it really is an art mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's one of those things that it takes a long time to develop your own style and really know what you're doing and right um, you know and, and creating things that are not like no other right um, everything is one of a kind and mm -hmm. is not a mass production type right. of deal it can't be for that investment of time and skill no. into it yeah so everything is a, a unique sculpture that's really great yeah. and and wearable art too you know, yeah your hats and your masks and things it's really great yeah yeah cool um, well, thank you very much. We'll uh, include links um, so you can find the Felton Gnome online. And you sell on Etsy, is that right? I sell on Etsy, though yeah. the store is not um, very packed right now. Um, I yeah. tend to actually sell more through Facebook. People contact oh, me through Facebook. Okay, yeah. And so we'll include your Facebook link yeah. and your Etsy so people can find you. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time before the show. Thank you. And um, this uh, episode will come out after the show is over, um, but I will put the dates for the next show up so people can get that always the weekend before thanksgiving right yeah always yeah good <laughs> right here in burlington yeah. so thank you all for joining us and tune in next time for more handcrafted goodness cheers